everyone, and welcome to Osu Otaku, your weekly anime podcast about a specific anime every season. This anime that we are watching this week, and I guess for months now, has been My Hero Academia. We are on episode 24 now. Holy yeah. cow, what an adventure. Uh, joining me as always, as per usual, is Cassidy. Cassidy, how are you? I'm doing okay today, Jake. How are you doing? Doing pretty good, pretty good. Really enjoyed this episode. Um, yeah, I, I just got to watch it again, so. Yes, same. <sighs> so good. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, how is I've, it so good? I know. I'm sad I, I only watched it twice, so I took my notes on the second viewing, um, and I didn't think I had a lot to say for this episode. I didn't have too much until after the intro, I think. I just like was sitting there watching it like oh, this backstory is so good. But then I wrote like a page and a half's worth of notes. So, yep. <laughs> you know, I liked it. Oh, my gosh. Well, because it was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. Um, I would say pretty damn important. A big turn for the League of Villains. No longer the League of Villains. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. It kind of sucks because they changed the name to skipping to the very end of the episode when they renamed themselves, but um, Paranormal Liberation yes. Front. And uh, yeah, that was an interesting choice, I yeah. thought, but I always liked the name League of Villains. So it's, a, it's like an end of an era, but it also means a new era is beginning and it's even scarier than ever before. <laughs> I liked it because it was less of a mouthful, uh, fewer syllables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But overall, um, really exciting to see where it's going. Um, let's get back to the beginning, though. Yeah. Holy cow. What? Um, so we got more oh Shigaraki backstory. Mm -hmm. So this episode, in contrast to last episode, is about the beginnings of Shigaraki's evil villain side. So we get to see him in the aftermath of killing his whole family, how All for One picked him up and, you know, gave him this, this life, this urgency to destroy. We get to see his first kill as like a kid villain. It's a double kill. Um, double <laughs> kill, yeah. And he earns more hands for that, which I, I think is like a... It, like a reward that all for one gives him for all like every person he kills i don't know if that continues on or whatever if it's symbolic for like his his first his first murders but um yeah that was interesting seeing that uh play out like this five-year-old just killing people <laughs> yeah yeah holy cow uh pretty messed up uh <laughs> They a little just, bit, yeah. Whole no punches. It's just immediately disgusting. Totally awesome. Mm -hmm. And oh, him just like wandering the streets by himself, and people don't even oh. want to talk to him because he does look a little creepy. Yeah, even yeah, he's got. But even with how he like his weird eyes and all the probably like the scratch marks and the scars on his face, like he's su he was such a cute little kid. Like I feel so bad for him that he he like went through this and his life started this way and uh it's just it's just such a sad story but yeah we love the backstory and it's good to know and it just makes shigaraki's character that much better yeah and he is absolutely incredible in this episode as far as like strength oh, yeah. and everything goes oh yeah he uh looks even more powerful than he did um when he was just first starting to fight Redestro and mm -hmm. definitely significantly more powerful than he was when he fought all the, you know, everyone else way back when. Right. Yeah. He he is definitely leveled up and reliving, like remembering his past and his trauma, of course. Same thing with Twice. It uh, ended up helping him in the end, gave him more power, gave him the ability to kind of push past all that and be as Redestro says, liberated from everything. So mm -hmm. he's like, he is like God tier in Redestro's eyes where he is just free of everything and he's like the most powerful. So yeah. that was pretty awesome. Oh my gosh. Absolutely insane. Just like completely OP at this point. Like, oh yeah. It, it's cool though, because we got to see him and Redestro fight some more and, um, uh, surprise everyone. Makia didn't even make it to them. Before the fight was nothing. over. 
Nope. <sighs> nope. Like the League of Villains just took care of pretty much everyone else before Maki even got there and they called him early and Shigaraki took care of Redestro in like I don't even know. That was like the shortest fight ever. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. Redestro like got all that armor and stuff and I, was... I know he like turned into a fucking mecha and it was just like wasted immediately <laughs> i was like what's the point dude like you're not getting yeah. out of this he tried he just he just couldn't do it yeah like the whole the fact that his mech was just disintegrating was hilarious yeah it's like dude what do you expect even further like he shigaraki destroyed the like mechanical part of his suit but then also got underneath to his legs like he touched the ground and had to cut off his own legs because <sighs> shigaraki's power had just like radiated he had, set, had such a huge radius that like he got caught up in this in his destruction and had to literally chop his own legs off and it was like so easy for him apparently <laughs> oh, that's it that's what really gets me is like it seems like his decay is now more like an infection which is also yeah. super gross yeah, super gross, but I mean, it makes sense and it fits his character so well, like, mm -hmm. and especially his progression of his quirk and his, I don't want to say like personality, but just like his trajectory in this show, like it just matches him perfectly. Exactly. It is incredible. And um, it was really funny to see like Getin and... Uh, Freaking skeptic mm -hmm. and every and trumpet are all like running back when they realize, oh shoot, like he's out of his league. Redestro can't hang. Yep, and they they all try and yeah, he he literally can't hang. <laughs> he, he lasted like two seconds in that fight, and then his his backup people like skeptic and getting all trying to help him, and he's like, stop, just no. We're Shigaraki's our leader now. Like, can you imagine what they must have felt like immediately? Like, this can this this matchup cannot go well. <laughs> mm hmm. And shoot, like all the uh, all Shigaraki did was just look back, and it stopped mm -hmm. Trumpet's quirk from working on all those people. Which yeah, was... it negated his quirk <sighs> like entirely which was insane like that's a whole other level of power that i don't even know how to get into like what even happened there his eyes though when he turned around were absolutely terrifying oh yeah he was a menace he was on something this episode and i mean it worked out for him he's he's the leader of the paranormal liberation <laughs> front now Yep. And he pretty much has all the power because he went overpowered and uh, his hair turned white. He did a Kaneki Ken. So mm -hmm. he is like just completely he has abandoned all sense of humanity, it seems like. And now he is just like this white haired, evil monster king. <laughs> yeah, well, he completely uh, wasted that whole city. Mm hmm. Yeah, like, he destroyed the whole thing. It's funny because we saw that in a different episode, and now we yep. got to see it happen like as it played out. And holy cow! Yep, it was good. That animation was yeah. incredible. That was a yeah. Lot. Like, can we talk about the animation real quick? <laughs> Hit me. It was so like I feel like the second half of this episode felt like they had a lot of those like really thick lines, or like it reminded me of the uh, studio wit mm. like they have those really thick lines like the season one of attack on titan is the mm -hmm. first thing that comes to mind like it, they're just so confident and bold and like they make the expressions and the characters stand out so much more it gives like so much more feeling mm -hmm. and oh, that was just so good I, I just noticed it immediately in the second half after the, like the mid-episode title cards it was just immediately especially on shigaraki and Redestro was just so good and coupled with the music i mean come on oh my gosh the music was absolutely amazing some of the best the that, music is always great yeah some of the best that they've done though and i don't know i feel like i think that every time but i know <laughs> because it it's an ost we've heard before for sure in regards to like the villains but i think they kind of just rearranged it so it was just like more especially the part um where redestro is introducing shigaraki as like the new leader i think they just kind of changed 
upped the soundtrack a little bit and made it like a little bit more like, I don't know what the word is, but like regal, I guess. I don't know. But it was so good. It matched so well. It was perfect. And speaking of the like second, the very end of the fight that they had, right? Everything, all of Redestro's armor is coming off. He's literally just flying through the air on that <laughs> sheet of metal. Yep. <laughs> like... I mean, that's also the sheet of metal he ended up cutting his own legs off with, which is yep. crazy. But yeah, like we were talking about, they um, went from, you know, the Metal Liberation Army went from just blindly listening to Redestro to uh, immediately flipping to Shigaraki, which you know makes sense based on everything that we saw. Mm -hmm. But it's... So hilarious to me that uh, Redestro has all of this access, has access to all of these uh, resources because of his company. <laughs> yeah. So he has all of this money, right? All of this money and all of this, uh, all of this, uh, all of these resources that are all of a sudden just. Um, all right, I want to get this right. The <laughs> like his uh, his wheelchair thing. Yeah, yeah, the paranormal liberation front. He just immediately, like, throws all yeah. resources behind him, which is crazy because we know, like, Spinner was, uh, like, oh, weirdo, Spinner. broke his shit. And, like, we, we yeah. thought we'd have his moment. Uh, he didn't, fun fact. Right, I know. <laughs> we were hoping nothing, though. Nope, not really. Oh, my god. I think gosh. they tried, but there's really not much you can do with Spinner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sound like such a normie, but what's the uh, what's the anime term for like those uh, the girls that wear the eye patch? There's like a specific term for it. I can't remember. I don't know the term, but um, it's I... such a trope. Oh, God. Is there a way to look this up? <laughs> <laughs> I should have looked it up before. Anime girl with eye patch trope yes but um yeah she uh fucking oh my god toga is that like a permanent eye patch now because all the best girls have eye patches That's it's just fact. true like yes oscar are you kidding one of the best girls ever megamine <laughs> yeah exactly uh i it's called kega doll okay, okay. Doll, yeah mostly translated as injured idol interesting oh yeah because they're usually really cute it makes perfect sense mm -hmm. the kegadol images feature pretty young women in casts bandages and eye patches so okay definitely definitely makes sense yeah gosh <laughs> but uh we i i i love it so um that's exciting i hope she keeps the eye patch yeah uh, <laughs> i like it she looks so much more like even more badass like she's i love toga so much yes she's phenomenal she is absolutely she's so great and it's nice that what was it twice was like having a like a shrine for her and she's like I'm, yeah. I'm alive i'm right behind you i'm alive <laughs> please don't mourn me yeah <laughs> yeah that was great <laughs> and but speaking of twice he is uh back to being his completely unstable self i know yeah i i we kind of uh, got a little taste of <laughs> his split personality again. Yeah. And I wonder if it's just like when he when he has to use his quirk, he can kind of get it under control. But most other times he kind of just doesn't even think about it. And, you know, his multiple personalities just take over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, we got to see another another sneak peek at twice going a little crazy again. Yeah. And now he's in a double cast. <laughs> yeah <laughs> hilarious <laughs> so good it's so funny though because like uh obviously toga and twice got the most beat up of uh all yeah. of the league of villain now paranormal liberation front but they uh they're all just hanging out eating sushi on a uh, freaking redestro's dime i know it's it's so great i was like <laughs> shigaraki was asking so you have like ceo money right you yep. can just kind of give us money i was like shigaraki you gold digger but i mean they have been like underfunded they're it's a villain organization other than like stealing money from people and like you know robbing banks and shit like where are they gonna get money from so yeah it makes sense and now they're kind of living like kings i mean shigaraki literally sits in a throne with a cape <laughs> exactly at their uh, new uh 
liberation meeting. So, man, he's he's kind of got it made now. He really does. Like, yeah, he's going to be getting that power from mm -hmm. uh, the doctor. So, man, the power, all of the Nomu. They have so the many power there. Of the combined uh, Meta Liberation Army and League of Villains. I mean, this is just insane. This is going on a whole. This is a whole new level of of power for the villains in this series. And, and we'll get uh, into it when we talk about the post credits, uh, uh, the teaser for next week. But there's a lot going you. on. Oh my gosh. Uh, but holy cow. So yeah. So what about? The lieutenants, though, what a squad! Right. Holy cow! <laughs> okay, I need to. Yeah, I need to pull this pull this up on screen because we got um, obviously our League of Villains members, mm -hmm. right? So we have Toga, Mister Compressed, Dobby, Spinner, who helped name the organization, apparently, <laughs> right? Of course, yeah. <laughs> So I guess they're trying to say, hey, he's good for something. Makes I don't know. sense. It's such a dumb name. Uh, yeah, right. I know. Exactly. <laughs> for Spinner. So we got Dobby Spinner twice, Mr. Compressed Toga, Shigaraki, obviously as a leader. Yep. Um, skeptic Getton, who has his hood off. Wild. So, and I know we could see like kind of his hair color a little bit. Kind of looks like maybe he's wearing a face mask or something. Mm hmm. Um, and uh the tr trumpet are the and redestro of course are the main uh lieutenants for this paranormal liberation front so our uh, man the big baddie is in charge of the littler baddies now Ooh. and they yeah go ahead all the big baddies of the little baddies definitely could hold their own i don't know yeah, nope. trump, trumpet's gonna be good just for like inspiring the army but like getting obviously yes. and skeptic are legitimately terrifying villains they're so good they are definitely assets to this team and that's what i'm saying like with this combined power i mean man i can't even imagine a like a fight or a war question mark between the this set of villains and the heroes and the students like ah it's gonna be insane so much I seriously, I, I just can't even, it's, uh, it's going to be so hype, but also so scary. I'm yeah. scared. Oh my gosh. It's going to be amazing. Like I'm so scared. And I guess, you know, that's a good way to transition into the next one and in, into talking about the end, but like, there's just, they, they teased us, right? With, oh, you, like, I mean, of course, like you said, we're coming back to the, all the UA students and stuff. And they know that they have to be ready for war. Oh, something we didn't touch on was the fact that Hox was in the crowd right. of all of those people. Yeah, let's 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 rewind for just a second because yeah, take a step back. Hawks. Yeah. I mean that that, that is part of the preview. Yeah. Um, because I once again <laughs> my mind is very in the moment when I'm watching these episodes, and I completely forgot that Hawks has been a um what do you call it a double, double agent double agent this entire time and he's been kind of just like in the shadows with this information like passing it on to the heroes and and whatnot but um yeah completely forgot about that um and but it's a great thing because now the good guys are gonna have you know at least a little bit of preparation Thank before goodness. Yeah, they fucking attack. I mean, I don't know what their plan is, this paranormal liberation front. I don't think they know what their plan. Right. So it's going to be a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. um, but probably not too long. <laughs> I mean, how many is so they lost so many? They lost like pretty much all their all their foot soldiers. They lost like a lot. Most of them, like 110, like some something close to like a hundred thousand people yeah and the league obviously doesn't have that many followers no. um so they're probably gonna have to build themselves up again but still i mean there's a lot of unrest in this uh quirk society and they kind of just that little story about um how they got away like they had they had distracted the heroes and then the heroes came 
to the Dika city and like killed the or captured the 20 villains that were in charge of the that was all like 20 villains yeah right so that was like a fake little story and then the people of the city that got destroyed who were helping like with their with their quirks those were the rest of the soldiers that didn't get caught yep that were part of the liberation army and the regular citizens obviously they didn't know that but they were like cheering cheering those soldiers on for using their quirks in this like attacked situation so it, i don't know it was like a whole thing where these like innocent civilians are rooting for the bad guy and they don't even know it and yep. it's kind of like proving the bad guy's point like people should be able to use their quirks and uh, it's just this this whole element being thrown in just has me kind of like oh this is gonna divide the country even more like quirks no quirks like liberation suppression all this stuff is just it's boiling up and soon we're gonna have a war yeah they did such a good job the uh formerly meta liberation army did such a good job playing it off mm -hmm. like the 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 regular people used their quirks and because they used their quirks and they weren't heroes they they made a big difference it's like oh sh right this and they helped save yeah Oh my god! The, the, the civil, the other people on the town, and yeah, it was. Which makes me think, you know, they they obviously have pretty good foresight and planning and all this stuff. So they're they don't have a plan yet, I don't think, for what to do next with this uh, combined group of villains. But mm -hmm. they will very soon. They, they will very soon. They don't even have Curious anymore to do like all their like reporting True. and stuff that's why she was such an important part of the team was mm -hmm. not only is her quirk fucking awesome it, mm -hmm. she was able to influence so many people by <laughs> manipulating the news basically right which is all the news is right so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean shoot it's crazy so the way that she's going about it and everything oh my gosh and they still have that good grip on all of it but yeah definitely okay yeah jumping back to our boy hawks right. Holy okay. cow, he looks stressed. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I would be too if I were him. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, he's got to go report back to the heroes that <laughs> literally there's this giant villain army now. <laughs> yeah. I, it just, uh, it's crazy how he was just even able to infiltrate their their ranks at, into the villain like well, I don't I mean, know. there's still that speculation that he kind of delivered best genus to uh meta liberation or was it the meta liberation or was it uh was it the league of villains it was never really clear i right. guess it would have been league of villains that he yeah. delivered genus best genus to and what yeah. happened with him who knows right i know <laughs> exactly but i mean even that, it's kind of a small price to pay to, like, I know it would be awful to have to, like, turn your friend into this villain organi organization, but, like, for the sake of all of villainy and heroes everywhere, I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. Well, not to just... To be able to get that information. Not just turn in your friend. He's the number three hero. Right. I mean... Like, he's a right below Hawks. That's crazy. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. But, uh... Yeah, so Hawks is in the know. Soon the heroes will be in the know. We'll probably get to see that in the next episode, him mm -hmm. well, relaying all that information. Well, shoot, we saw a little bit with present Mike and... Uh, Aizawa Sensei! I mean, okay, so we saw them. We don't know if they're... We don't know if they're talking about their experience they just had with their old friend or... Shirakumo. Oh, God. So sad. Oh my god. Thank goodness we got all this like action and stuff in between so I didn't have to get emotionally destroyed so often about I know. Ugh. But still, uh I mean I don't think I think they'll be talking about this in the next episode. Oh yeah, for but sure. They might be yeah, incorporating some of their like you know, uh Shirakumo, their little friends. Mm -hmm. Uh like they might be talking about him again, but um, I feel like it'll mostly be about this information that Hawks is going to give. And man, present Mike, he always looks so like distressed. He does. He always looks so <laughs> He's distressed. Laying face down on that ottoman. 
Okay. And he looks up with like his bloodshot eyes and he's like, oh, fuck. Dude, the best thing about present, that's like the best thing about present Mike, though, is he's mm-hmm. so emotive. <laughs> like, yeah. He's just such a perfect parallel to freaking Aizawa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's why they're such good friends, of course. Opposites attract. Oh, so good. And then, holy cow, what about the training? We get like a couple seconds, 16 second training montage, basically. Oh. Or, you know, class 1A. And Mm -hmm. they look amazing. They look amazing. I miss them so much. They're so cute. I can't wait to see them. It's going to be such a fucking tease. Mm -hmm. Like, like the season finale is this Saturday. (sighs) Sigh. Yeah. Press F. Yeah, please. F in the chat. I can't. I don't. It's going to be so upsetting, but. Yeah. We, we get to see our best boys and girls again. Finally. Thank goodness. And hopefully everyone gets a lot of good screen time. Um, it looks like Wakugo is getting some good uh, him and Midoriya meeting with uh, All Might. So that's going to be cool. I know. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see All Might again. Seriously. And it kind of looks like they're fighting the, um, the giant robots from the entrance exam. Yeah. From like the early, early from season yeah, one. Yeah. Like. Yeah, episode one or two. <laughs> so cool. Or two or three or something. But yeah, they we get to see Ida, Todoroki, Tokoyami, Ashido. We get to see all of our favorite characters, Kirishima. Ashido looks Shaco. awesome. I know. She's got she's got that acid down pat, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's ridiculous. She crushed it. <laughs> and holy cow. Oh yeah. It, it's crazy. Hopefully, we don't see much of Mineta, even though last time we saw him, he was actually very good. The tough call. He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't being a complete pervert asshole. So, it was a I pleasant don't know. surprise. Yeah, it's kind of like a 50 50 shot with him now, but honestly, yeah, we got, uh, we, we got a really um, emo name for this next and final episode the high deep blue sky oh my gosh what's it gonna mean is it gonna be i don't know and then the second to last one of the last shots is hawks looking mm-hmm. distraught in the hallway is he gonna be oh is it gonna be him ah <sighs> what's he he's wearing his little goggles like what's he gonna do what's gonna happen ah oh, literally anything could happen like i no matter what happens next episode i'm they're obviously going to leave it on this huge cliffhanger. Yeah. And I I can't wait, but also I'm nervous because what will it be? No matter what it is, I will be surprised. Absolutely. It's going to totally mess me up. I know. Ugh. I, I wonder when they're going to announce season six. <laughs> it better come out in March again. I'm going to be devastated. Uh, I hope they I, were. See, the thing, the nice thing about MHA, right, is they usually do everything. They're not working week to week kind of thing like. Right. Uh, Toriyama did with Dragon Ball and DBZ and all that jazz. So, yeah, Hopefully. it's too big of a franchise right now. Exactly. So they need to they, they work ahead. So hopefully that makes a big difference and we don't just have to like wait yeah. for another year. I mean, they came out with a movie while the show was still running. So like obviously they have things made in advance and I kind of wish they didn't churn out those movies just like so fast because right. maybe we could get some focus on the canon show you know <laughs> yeah exactly and uh yeah i hear the same studio is doing mob psycho 3 so um That's awesome i think maybe some of the uh attention in the studio went more to that um versus the season five of mha so mm-hmm. hopefully they have their plate cleared by the time i mean they should be working on it by now, I think. That's, yeah, for yeah. sure. So uh, hopefully everything's in place with both of those shows and we get some good, uh, we get some epic animation and great uh, pacing, maybe, hopefully, for next season. Uh, <laughs> speaking of the movie, did you see that it got a U.S. release date? <gasps> no. Yeah. I'm a fake fan. When is it? October 29th. No! so soon i say that like i know i literally just searched it <laughs> while we were talking about oh the movie i was God. like oh man Dang. i should check to see if it's coming so we're we gonna go see it together are we like... gonna are we gonna have to do like a big event where we actually go see it and then record in person 
Wait, it's in theater. It's going to be in theaters. It's going to be in theaters. I, you're witnessing me have uh, like a heart attack live right now. It's going to be. I'm so pissed. I didn't see this. I'll be honest, everyone. I'm outing myself. I didn't see the second movie in theaters. I did see the first one. Me neither. So. OK, and, I have to say, I wasn't even I hadn't even seen an episode of anime, <laughs> let alone my hero, when the first movie came out so i can't say that i went to see it in theaters but i really wanted to see the second movie in theaters because it was just before the pandemic hit and mm -hmm. i was so upset because obviously i didn't realize that this would be going on this fucking long yep. and i didn't go see it and i was so pissed at myself but obviously i ended up watching it like way further down the line like yep. only a couple months ago i watched it it was probably longer than that by now but I'm so happy I get to see it. Like I got to see the Demon Slayer movie in theaters. Like every chance I get, I'm going to see these movies in theaters. And I got, can't believe it's going to be out. Yay. Absolutely. So exciting. That trailer got so, me. Oh. I know. Oh my gosh. I have to go watch the trailer again after, <laughs> after we're done. But um, yeah, we definitely have to uh, link up for that and record our reaction afterwards to the movie oh, it's gonna be so good it's gonna be so good i can't believe it i can't oh. it, it oh, was a, so such a pleasant exciting. surprise thing that was next month oh my god yeah that's crazy that, you, that that same kind of thing happens to me when uh evangelion was gonna come out on amazon i, I was like oh my god this is crazy and it's right now <laughs> i know <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, you're watching at Hogtie Productions, uh, please drop a follow and a like. Uh, hope you like what you see. Uh, make sure to check us out on twitch.tv and follow us on all social media platforms and TikTok. Uh, you can follow me at Jake the Mayor on all social media platforms and uh, you can follow Cassidy where? At Cassidy Co. or at Kohai Arts. And we do some streaming on twitch at fish inc so hit us with a follow and seriously check out those tiktoks <laughs> they're uh, great jake <laughs> thank you and i need to get back into it i'll hopefully make another one today very nice pushing out that content exactly just churning it out everyone thanks for watching thanks for listening stay safe out there please